Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. And today is day three of the four days of prayer and fasting, praying for the anointing of the intercessor. And as you've been fasting, as you've been subjecting the flesh to be crucified, as you've been pressing into God, reading the Bible program, reading the stories of those that inspire us to also pray. And you're praying the prayer points. God is drawing you ever closer by the power of his Holy Spirit to draw closer to him in this hour. And just as families are joining, churches are joining, uh, single people are joining, friends, colleagues, workplace, People are joining in as you're sharing the program and giving them this deep insight into prayer and the importance of prayer because we cannot have revival unless it is birthed in prayer. What is birthed in prayer must be sustained in prayer, precious saints. We need the Spirit of God more now than ever before. We need His graces, His mercy. We need something special in this hour so God can connect us and lead us and to guide us within this area. Hallelujah. Now, I want to read from the scripture according to Romans 15 verse 30. It says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Somebody say hallelujah. See, there are struggles that one must face. There are struggles that we go through that require prayer. That's why we receive so many prayer requests because people say, please pray for my marriage. Please pray for my children. Please pray for my finance. Please pray for my workplace incident. Please pray for my healing, my deliverance, whatever it is. We are to share the burden of prayer, precious saints. But as believers of Jesus Christ, we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know that we are children of God. Somebody say hallelujah. We can believe that we are children of God. We can think it. We can desire it with all of our hearts. We can pray for it. But the real validation happens when the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us declares that we are children of God. Somebody say hallelujah. We are children of God. We sit in heavenly places. God has positioned us in places that what we ask for it shall be granted when we believe that we will ask what we have asked for he's even promised that he will give it to us according to mark uh, chapter 11 god has given us that grace to be able to go and enter into his mercy seat through the blood of jesus christ believing that our petitions will be heard and as paul was saying here hey this struggle that i have I'm also committed to ask you to please pray for me that the burden that I'm carrying may be good because I'm wrestling with this stuff. Somebody say wrestle. We are wrestling in the spirit because there is a wrestling going on around us. Now, according to uh, Genesis chapter 32, we see the story in the account of Jacob who wrestled with God. He wrestled with God. We're going to wrestle in the spirit, as the word of God says. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you you bless me. So as Jacob found out, tenacious, persevering prayer eventually pays off. It pays off when you have that tenacity, when you have that perseverance to pray in. Now, we see this just as obtaining the blessing, but really it is a refining that is going on because basically God is saying, hey, Jacob, you can't do this on your own. You can't do this in your own strength. And it's only by my might, my power, my blessing, 
my anointing. And just as Paul said, hey, I can't do this race alone. I also need the assistance of prayers of the church. And he put out a petition to those that, hey, I need your prayers. So it's all right to ask for prayers and it's all right to uh, to work with the body of Christ because we're not meant to run individually, but rather we are meant to operate as a body where someone is the hand, someone is the feet, someone is and Jesus is the head, but we are all different parts of the body. So here we see that he has wrestled with God to obtain the anointing, to obtain that blessing. We are here this weekend praying that God would anoint us with the special grace of the intercessor, that God would bless us, that God would touch us, that God would hear our prayers, that God would turn around and do what only he can do. Somebody say hallelujah. He wrestled all night in prayer. He would not let go until God blessed him. And we also should not let go until we see results. We've got to believe that God is going to do what he said in his word. God is going to answer the prayer points. God, just as he used Father Nash in today's story, we see that he was the one that prayed before Charles Finney went to a place. It doesn't mean that he was the one doing it all. We all need each other's assistance, but we need to know our part. We need to know our point. We need to know our position in the army. We are all members of the army, but we've got to know our positions. If we're trying to uh, be the arm, but we're not the arm, or if we're trying to be the foot, and we're not the foot, then it's going to look kind of strange if everyone's trying to do the same thing. So we must know our position within God's army. And so it is. God is clearing away. God is calling intercessors, end time intercessors to pray for the end time revival, to pray for our families, to pray for our provision, to pray that the kingdom of God will be uh, expanded. So there will be a harvest of souls that will come in into this end time hour. They'll be ready for the coming of the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. We know that Daniel also prayed. Daniel wrestled in the spirit. He fasted for 21 days. That's where we get the whole thing of the Daniel fast. He fasted and there was a contention because the messenger who was going to respond on the first day of his prayers was held up because principalities and powers were holding with stopping. We've got to keep praying and breaking through until the heavens open, until revival comes. Somebody say hallelujah. Now we also see Paul goes on and he also illustrates in Ephesians chapter 6 what he is wrestling against. He says, put on the whole armor of God because the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies us, that you may be able to successfully to stand against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, contending only with the physical opponents, but against the what the deep uh, uh, the the principalities, the pr uh, hosts of wickedness in high places, master spirits, the world rulers um, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural realm. Precious saints, we are up against an army. We need to assist each other in prayer so we can push through, so God can bring about the breakthrough. And we need to keep pushing until we obtain the blessing because God is about to do something. So when Paul wrote this, he is saying, hey, just like the Olympics, they have wrestling. Just at that time, they had the Greek wrestlers. He is saying that, hey, we are in a wrestling match that is now coming against what God wants for us. And we need to keep on praying, precious saints. We need to keep on praying. We need to keep on believing. We need to keep on wrestling with the Spirit because God is doing something in this hour. God is bringing about a wrestling match, even though the enemy, he did not want this message to go through, but we are praying in. We are praying through. God is about to do something in this hour, and we must must be ready for what he's going to do because he is going to get all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And no matter what the devil is trying to do against you, God is going to bring about his purpose. God is going to bring it about because it was just like, see, each wrestler sought to throw the opponent onto the ground 
and put his own foot on the neck and that would be declared the winner. That's, that's what Paul was seeing. Paul was seeing the, uh, uh, the victory of keeping the devil under our feet, keeping the devil uh, with our foot on his neck so he wouldn't be able to turn around and do whatever he thinks he can do. Precious saints, we are living in such a time now where God is moving. God is bringing about his purpose. God is bringing about his purpose, precious saints. And just as it was in Ephesians 6, he also saw that that was the full armor of God. He was saying to us, hey, just as the Roman soldier is now tied up to me because I'm in house arrest, I need to put on this full armor of God. I need to put on the belt of truth. I need to put on the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Precious saints, we are living in such a time now where God wants us to be in the victory. We need to wrestle in prayer against the world rulers of darkness darkness and the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So in one sense, we are we're in a wrestling match with the enemy, but we are the winners. We will persevere. Precious saints, we are the winners. We are the winners. So it shouldn't surprise us that we are going to win, that we will have struggles at times and the struggles will try to come against us, but we are going to overcome we are going to overcome the enemy. We're going to overcome because the spirit of the living God is giving us the grace to overcome. The spirit of the living God is enabling us to overcome through prayer with the anointing of the intercessor because the power of God is here. God is here. Paul wanted even the spirit led and love-driven prayer to focus on the desire to proclaim Jesus so that he could have the power to bring about God's purpose. However, the spirit-led and love-driven kind of prayer can be offered for anything, even for another brother, even for another si sister. So when we're praying, it must be also in the heart of love. We must love lost souls. We must love our father, uh, brothers and sisters. We must love our spouses. We must love our children. We must love uh, the, the, the work colleagues, the work bosses that we are praying for. So Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch each person from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray right now that you would touch them and fill them, touch them and fill them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray there will be an impartation of the anointing that will come upon them for this intercessor that no matter what is happening around them, oh Lord, you're going to arise. You're going to arise and let our enemies be scattered today. We are in that victory seat. We are in that victory position. The devil belongs under our feet. And just like the wrestler would have his foot on the neck of the losing opponent, the devil is under our feet. He is under our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. We are victorious. Heavenly Father, I pray for an impartation of your anointing to come upon each person. Heal them. Deliver them today. Bring about such a great move of God within this end time hour that go beyond our understanding. Oh God, send your anointing. Send revival. Send your spirit, Lord. We need you. Oh Lord, we need you. Oh Lord, we need you. Oh, Lord, Oh Lord, we need you. Oh Lord, send your spirit, Lord. Touch us afresh today. Touch us afresh today, each and every person that is viewing in, each and every person that is listening. Touch them, fill them today. Fill them today. Fill them today, oh Lord. Fill them today and touch them and fill them in a powerful way. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, send revival. Oh Lord, send revival. Oh Lord, send revival. Revival, revival. Send revival to us. We are hungry. We are thirsty. Send it, Lord. We want it now. We want that revival. We need more of your spirit. More of your love. Oh Lord, as we learn the things of the spirit, let us groan in the spirit. Let us weep in the spirit. Let us persevere in the spirit. Let us push in prayer and 
until we get our answers. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Touch each person, surround them today in Jesus' mighty name. We pray and believe amen and amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy coming to you from the prayer mountain. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And if you've liked this utterance, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. Precious saints, we are on our way to Africa. Get ready. Kenya, we are coming this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, all free of charge. Just come. Though you have no money, though you have no money, come, buy and eat. It's all free. Just come and receive the word and the anointing and the revival of what God wants to do in this hour. Oh, Zambia, God is coming to you the following weekend, then Mozambique for two weekends, then to South Africa and wherever the Lord sends me, get ready ready America we shall be with you soon we shall be with you in November those in America spread the word God is coming with repentance revival in this hour it is now time it is now time it is now time may all those that hear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church time is absolutely over Jesus Christ is coming back soon for his elect but he is coming to pour out his spirit to bring in a bigger harvest of souls within this end time so from my family to yours God bless you we love you we are praying for you precious saints shalom shalom shalom